Walker. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can start your comedic My partner. Comedic partner. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> like that a lot. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Whoops. Hang on just one second. Just getting our... Uh, Getting, uh, getting all of you, getting all y'all up on my TV. Hello, everybody. So I can see how you guys doing today. Why did you cross the road? Because the first one made it, but he wasn't so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay, I got to go back to no the No lucky. Edna was the first one in. Hello, Edna. Hi, hi, hi. It's, where, which side am I on? Oh, it's always backwards when I'm up this way. So it is so good to see you, Edna. It is definitely good to see you. It's been a while. Glennis is here with me on the panel today. She'll be watching chat for everyone. Hello, Margie. How are you? Jello, Jello. Do you have Jello with you for lunch? Uh, let's see. Laura, Jello, everyone. Well, we can start because our comedy duo is here. In fact, <laughs> uh, hi, KK. How are you? Good to see you. I think, uh, let's see. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because the first one made it, but he wasn't so lucky. I think that's why he didn't the chicken get across. The, I think that's why didn't the chicken get across the road. Oh, I am confused, but never mind. <laughs> hi, Shirley. Happy Monday. Good to see you. <laughs> haven't even had breakfast unless coffee counts. Are you kidding, Laura? I've already been up, had breakfast, gone to physical therapy. Uh, now I'm exhausted, need a nap, but you guys are going to reinvigorate me. I know it always does just being here. <laughs> so good to see you all on a Monday, on a happy Monday. As you can tell, because the background's different, I am at the mixed media desk today because we are going to play with messy stuff. And I won't blame you if nobody's playing along, but it'd be fun if somebody is playing along. So, um, we are going to play with bleach today. Bleach, bleach, bleach. Hang on, I'm just looking for a couple of things here. I've got stuff all over here. I gathered together all kinds of things. We are going to play with bleach and we're going to try it on um, with uh, distress ink and with archival ink and with sprays of all different kinds and brands. Um, we're going to try it with alcohol ink. And what are those? Those distress spray sprays. We're even going to try it with Patty Pockets. Margie's like me. She doesn't own any bleach either. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Last time, um, Last time I did a bleach thing, I think it was a, a Tuesday tip. It was just a, you know, a seven minute or 10 minute thing. And I stamped the crazy birds from Tim Holtz and then um, colored them in with bleach and it changed the paper. And so they colored without even using any color. Do you guys remember that? If you, if you didn't see it, go at later, later, Go to find the playlist that is Tuesday's Tips in 10. Tuesday's Tips. And find that one because it's really cool. And it will give you some ideas of what you can do with bleach. You don't even have to have color, you know, colored pencils or anything with you. Um, but when I did that one, it was a couple months ago, a few months ago, and I had to go buy bleach because I didn't have any either. So I had to go buy a thing of bleach. Um, I do have the toilet bowl bleach. We use that. And that works for this as well. I've got some. In fact, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so this one right here is the... Want to make yourself big? Yeah, I guess I could do that. Because yeah, I'm just doing chat. I'm not... <laughs> oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, um, especially anybody who's not been here or been here in a while, if you have a question, if you will put several question marks, three or four question marks, and then type your question in all caps, and then put a few question marks after it. That makes it really easy for Glennis to see, because when the chat gets going, sometimes things fly by and it's hard for us to see them. If there's something, a comment or a question that you specifically want to make sure that I see, 
<clears throat> Edna, yeah, you got time. Run down and get the bleach. <laughs> um, then put that in all caps, definitely. Glennis will be watching chat and reading the chat out loud for me. And so that way um, we can make sure that she doesn't miss something that you specifically want me to see. So caps, caps is good for that. So this little dish of uh, gel bleach here, this is the toilet bowl cleaner bleach. And that works, gel bleach, liquid bleach, any kind of bleach works. This bowl right here is um, a gel bleach, but it's out of you know the big uh, bottle. This is the bottle that I bought when we did that um, Tuesday's tips. So does anybody know what these little floaty things are? <clears throat> I don't remember them being there last time I, when I first got it. And it's only been, I mean, at the most six months, it's been less than six months because it was this year. And so I poured it and these little white things, little white things are in here. And I don't know what they are. Does bleach go solid? Anybody know what these are? This little white uh, cloudy, they're, they look like little clouds. They're white, they're soft, I can break them apart. I've uh, I've never seen the gel bleach. It's been so long I've used, since I've used bleach. So yeah, I don't know what they are. Never seen that in bleach, but yeah, you know, it's okay. It'll all work. So I'm going to use a pipette a lot today. And um, I didn't have an extra, I didn't have a spray bottle that wasn't being used. I really wanted to put some bleach and spray, but we can splatter some that will work too. And let me get this out of the way. I'll just slip that in my, no, I won't slip that in my pocket. I'll put it right there. Okay. Um, if you are using bleach, if you're going to do it along with us, then I would recommend that you use synthetic bristle brushes because it will eat away at the natural bristle brushes. And whoops, do not fall because I had you there perfectly ready to go. Um, I'm looking on my turntable because I believe somewhere on this turntable. There's some sponges. Maybe we'll use sponges. But I believe that there is Q-tips and toothpicks. And if there is, I want to grab those. Q-tips. You have everybody smelling bleach now. Everybody goes oh, smelling bleach. <laughs> Whether you have it or not, you're smelling it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's some toothpicks. I guess the Q-tips uh, I guess the Q-tips aren't right here, but that's okay. That's okay. All right. So I've got an old rag. This is my um I've got a bunch of these. These are ones that I use specifically here in the studio and um I don't care if bleach gets on them and I use them to wipe off ink and all kinds of things. And when they get really dirty, then I wash them. This is a fairly new one. Then I wash them and then I keep using them until they get absolutely completely full and look really cool. And then I can use them in a project that we're doing. Oh, okay. Whew. Need to take a breath, get a drink. All right, Glennis, keep up on the chat for me, would you? And I will just, um, if I'm talking away and you've got chat to read to me, just say, hey, Marianne, <laughs> and I'll know, because I'll just get going. And if I'm not looking at chat, because it's hard to go back and forth, then sometimes I forget that. Yeah, it, Margie's just mentioning um, that in the old days, we had bleach pens. And actually, I remember those. Oh. They might work pretty good, but you could like write something down. Yeah. I'd forgotten about those, but I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they were a thing. Which makes me wonder, could I put liquid bleach in a water pen with synthetic fiber and write with it? Oh, you got to try that. Definitely. Why not? And then and Edna's um, back. I would just empty it out after for sure, you know. Yeah, Edna. I would empty it out after for sure so it doesn't sit in there and eat away at the plastic. Yeah. But let me see That's a great idea. if I've got one. 
we'll create our own bleach pin. I think um, you could probably, here's one that's pretty much destroyed anyway. So just in case it further destroys it. <laughs> um, I think you could probably write somewhat with the uh, pipette too, with especially with the gel because the gel is thicker and you could, you know, do kind of like that. All right, so this one has been a lot destroyed. Let's see if we can get this. I already have black ink on my hands just from pulling things together. Um, get the water out, there we go. Squeeze it, sorry about the arm in the middle of the picture, but the cup of water is right in front of me. That's pretty much out. Okay, then let's see, we could just use a pipette and suck some up and put it in here. Oh, what the heck, we'll do more. Let's <laughs> fill her up, fill her up, why not? <laughs> That's happy paper people, all or nothing. <laughs> okay. okay. <clears throat> all right, that is gonna be fun to try. Okay, thanks Margie, that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started. What I've done is just pull out some um, packaging. I've got tons of packaging. And so I've pulled out some white packaging, got some torn pieces. Um, one of them was one of those gift boxes, you know, that shirts come in and tore that up so we could try a bunch of different things and i've got some old manila folders as well and let's see i did grab a couple of stencils so we're gonna try that so let's start what are we gonna start with what are we gonna start with let's start with just uh some distress ink that should be fun let's see um is this the brand newest color? Nope, this is Prize Ribbon, and I haven't even opened and used Prize Ribbon. I grabbed a handful of Distress inks, and I grabbed ones that I don't use often or haven't even opened yet. Another brand new one that I haven't even opened and used is Villainous Potion. I've used the alcohol ink of Villainous Potion, which is different than this, but... Um, Let's see. Uncharted Mariner. That's the brand new one. Okay, so let's do that one. It's a very deep blue. It looks like it looks like almost like a um, a stormy sea sky. Yep. Um, that is really dark right there that I went over and over. Don't need to go over and over note to self. <laughs> Let's see. So what colors would be good with that? Stormy sky is a little lighter, but kind of the same. Yeah, that's too much the same. Something, um. You need something that'll bring the, the dark out, like maybe throw something like a pink in. Let's see. I've got spun sugar here and kitsch flamingo. Yeah, why not? I don't think I've ever used Kitsch Flamingo. We'll overlap those just a little bit. And you know, okay, if you use your blending brush from one Distress Ink to the other, or you go over it like that, like I just did, and now you've got a little bit of the other color on it, you have not contaminated your, um, your pad. Okay, a lot of people think, oh, shoot, now I've done it, now I've ruined it, now I've contaminated my pad. You have not. Tim Holt says that all you need to do is take a baby wipe and uh, rub and clean the top of it, and you will clean that right off. It does not go down in it and contaminate the pad. So that is good to know. Yellow, I like that idea. And there's a little bit of space over it. This is squeezed lemonade, nice and bright. By overlapping it, we're going to get a little bit um, of different colors. So there should be a little bit of green here and a little bit of orange there. Didn't even mean to do that big of a piece, but hey, what the heck? When you're having fun, just cover the whole thing, right? 
Okay, I'm going to put those three back there because we have used them. So if we do more of that, we'll grab a different, okay, different colors. So I'm going to just grab some um, bleach in the pipette and I'm going to start dropping it here and there. And let's see what it does. We're really doing a lot of experimenting today. Look at those perfect circles. That looks like, I didn't even mean to go in a line, but it looks like I used a stencil for that. Yeah, that's, it's very exact. Okay, so then what if you actually took this, cause it's gel and made it go in kind of little lines here and there. They're kind of thick because it is gel. And the first thing that comes out is kind of thick there, but I could probably even make that run a bit. Let's see if that will run. Oh, I like that. So, wow. It literally bleached these, the pink and the yellow, it, um, and even the green over here, literally bleached it white. The blue is not bleached white, but it is definitely bleached. But there's other blue in the middle of it. That looks really cool. So you could then come back over the whole thing, let it dry completely. And you could, whoopsie, just squirted a whole mess out there. Let's see if we can get it to run. The running, it's a part, I like that. I think that looks really cool, yeah. running. Laura says it's very colorful and playful. Yes. Fun. Margie says, get a bully to chase it and it'll run. <laughs> that was good, Margie. That was so good. <laughs> oh, wow. That was funny. Okay, so these lighter colors, it literally bleached them white. The blue... And it may be, it may, it really, it's only this spot where it was really dark and heavy. It bleached it white, but then there's some blue run into it. And I'm thinking that's because I went over and over it right there. And that's the brand new one. And so it was really thick, really heavy. Yeah. Interesting because everywhere else, oh, that is pretty. That is cool. Okay. So that is with Distress Ink. So we know how that that works quite well. I'm thinking that you could do the same thing. Instead of the pipette, you could use a brush and you could actually paint where you want it with the brush. Well, that's so, like using the water brush. You could just, you know, put that. Yeah. Down. Okay. We'll come back to this one. I'm going to set that one aside because I want to try a bunch of different um, media and see how it works. And then we'll come back and play on top of some of those. So let's use some sprays. I've got um, several of these Nuvo Sparkle sprays here. And let's see, I grabbed a few Distress spray stains. Actually, let me see here. Oh, it helps if I try to open the right side. What are these? These are distress spray stains too. Okay, let's start with the new bowl because they're right there. We're ready to go. Um, let's see here. This one is amethyst shimmer. This one is strawberry ice. And that one is apple spritzer. All three together or just those? Let's start with these two. All right, let's shake them. And let's hope they spray. <laughs> oh, last week, I think I was watching somebody do something mixed media and they grabbed a spray and tried to spray it and it wouldn't spray. <laughs> I just had to laugh. I'm like, it doesn't matter what company it is. One out of 10 or whatever doesn't yep. spray. And it's really frustrating. I wish somebody would come up with a no clog sprayer for all the companies. It is, it isn't just, you know, one company or even two. Oh, you're got it spraying. So that one's spraying. 
Um, Margie's computer is having to, is acting up, so she might have to come back later. Ah, uh, shoot. Hope not, Margie. Shall we add this? Oh, this is morning fog. Let's, should we add some morning fog or some amethyst shimmer? Some gray or some purple with that red and green. That's really shiny. That makes the camera have a hard time. I'm going to add, let's add a little bit of this purple and see how different it is from that red. It, oh, it is. It's dark. Okay. All righty. Hey, so now we've got some Nouveau shimmer sprays. Boy, they are shimmery. With the light at the angle I have it, I see all I see is a big reflection, like a giant puddle of oil. Oh, it's going nicely on the on the screen. Oh, good. Okay, so let's do a few drops here and there. It's going to be hard to splatter the gel. That's for sure. I don't have any liquid bleach. Both of these are gel. And so it'll be hard to splatter them because I'd really like some teeny tiny dots. But let's see if we can get that with a toothpick. We might be able to. And we've got two ends. We've got a pointy end and we've got a flat end. So I'm going to try the flat end. and see if I can get some teeny tiny dots. Um, Laura's suggesting you try it with a stencil. I've got three stencils sitting right here, Laura. Great minds. Okay, what's really interesting is, I don't know if can, I think, yeah, I think it's showing. These here where I sprayed it, or I didn't spray it. I dropped the, the drops on. It is not so. Hi, Julie. Really. Hi, Julie. It is not going past that shimmer spray. And so it's actually sitting up like a blister. I think it's showing. I can see that on my yeah. TV. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. It's, it's sitting crazy. up like a blister. It's not soaking in. That is really interesting. And so it's like the. Wow. It's like the, it took the color. I'm just spreading this one around to see what it does. It took the color and the color is in the bleach, but it didn't soak in. So then you don't see the change of color. Interesting. So if you want cool 3D dots, on the Nouveau Shimmer Sprays, and might be some other Shimmer Sprays too. It might be the Shimmer that it can't get past. And that I would let this completely dry and they will um, settle down some like this one, but they'll still be, you can see these here, they'll still be like dimensional dots, but they won't look like Clorox at all. That's for sure, bleach. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. Okay. So that's fascinating. Look, as this one sits longer, look what's happening to it. Oh, yeah. I like Looks that like better. One of those old 60s tie dye t shirts, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's starting to get there. Okay. So let me move this one over. I also want to show you a technique for painting a picture using bleach. That is kind of cool. Well, kind of very cool. Um, okay, let's grab another one. And this time, let's try Distress Sprays. These are Distress Spray Stain. So we've got Twisted Citron. Yes, Julie, she's using gel bleach. Um, she's using in a in a, in a pipette. In a pipette, yep. Um, I have two, I have a gel bleach here out of the jar. And then this one here is a gel bleach toilet bowl cleaner. And they both work. 
This saltwater taffy is one of the new, new, newer ones. And actually it was the last one before this marina one. And I haven't even opened it. So let's see if I can somehow break this plastic. I don't see. Edna, oh, and now you're saying you're using the regular bleach. Do you mean the liquid bleach? Oh, okay. I'd like to know what your results are like. Yes, Edna, um, if you're using liquid bleach, so it's not this gel, um, as you get some cool things, uh, take some pictures and just message them to me and we'll put them up on chat so everybody can see the difference because you will have a different result with the liquid bleach. I just don't have any liquid bleach. Since I don't buy a lot of bleach, uh, we would just use the gel. I like the gel for doing the, the thing that I did on the Tuesday's tips because it's more, I, I feel like it's more controllable because it's mm -hmm. thicker. Mm -hmm. Or you don't want it to be controlled right now. Right. With this, it would be kind of nice to have the liquid. Okay, so this is saltwater taffy. Now these don't have the shimmer stuff in them that, that those little Nuvo ones do. All right, I think we might need to get this to dry first. And I'm also wondering if this is slick. So I might side by side do um, a piece of manila folder. Okay, and we're gonna use the twisted citron with it. Margie's concerned that you're by mixing the uh, the the chemicals with the, the in the sprays with the bleach that you'll get some weird effects. And I'll get high. <laughs> well, if you're more concerned about than oh yeah, I'm being very careful not to get it on my hands, and I am in a well ventilated area, and I have two fans going uh, specifically for that. Thank you, Margie. Margie knows I don't always think about my own self. So, um, okay, let's see. What color would be good with these? One more color. This is the saltwater taffy and twisted citron. Something darker, maybe a blue. Maybe a, let's see, what have I got there? Prize ribbon or, yeah, there's prize ribbon. Um, not a purple. Let's try prize ribbon. Like that. There's, they're not sane. I'll give us something darker in with that. Okay. That is pretty. That prize ribbon is really pretty. Okay. I'm going to grab the heat gun and help this dry a little faster. doesn't have to be dried. Well, it depends. Sometimes it does need to be dried before you put bleach on it. Other times it doesn't. I'm not sure about these uh, spray stains, so I'm going to dry them. What I'm seeing is that this that came off the back of a, a paper pad this white one over here, it seems a little bit coated. And so it's not soaking in and drying like it is over here on the manila folder. Julie was wondering how white vinegar would work. Say that again. She was wondering how white vinegar would work. Uh, I don't know. That would be a good test. But she but said, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> not going to try it? No. Why not? 
Look, I got some really cool effects on here just by putting the blow dryer really close. Oh, that looks great. Isn't that cool? I like that a lot. Yeah. I would do that on purpose and create like crackle type um, cells, not not crackle, but more of the cells. It was like alcohol ink. Yeah. That looks great. Just by using the blow dryer. Okay, so let's see what happens here. The manila folder has definitely soaked in better because it isn't coated at all. And this one appears to be a little bit coated. This is the back of an eight by eight paper pad. RG says it looks like germs under a microscope. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. That it does. Laura said she tried the white vinegar, but it didn't do anything. Huh, that's interesting. What did you try it with? I can get this one to run a bit. So there was a few spots on here where it wasn't dry. And I did put some bleach on those spots. And then getting it to run. Uh, it would run better if it was liquid bleach. It would run thinner. Yeah. It would run thinner. It's running a little bit thicker um, because it is... Uh, a gel. Laura said she did it on paper a few years ago. Okay. On tea dyed paper, on book pages, and different papers. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So not with ink or something, but just directly on the paper. To, um, and you know what I found? Uh, like doing the, the bleach on the paper with the stamped Crazy Bird um, for that Tuesday's Tips. Um, I could go through, pull out 20 different colored pieces of paper and they don't all bleach. So it might not be the vinegar technique. It might have been the paper. So oh, right. yeah. only about okay. half. Um, I had a lot of colors of paper that would not bleach. So about half of them would bleach, which was really interesting. And it was some of the darker colors that I really wanted that big old contrast didn't bleach. Yeah. And some of the lighter ones did. And, and then some that, you know, some turned like a light version of itself, some turned almost white, and then some turned like a totally different, you know, blue and it turned pink or something. I still really like this one. Oh, that's my favorite. It needs to dry completely on its own. So I'm going to set that. Yeah, Laura here. thinks it's the sizing in the paper that's doing it. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that, Laura. I would agree with that. Okay, so let's go to. Toby is comparing the one on the manila up to an ant trail. <laughs> it does kind of look like that, doesn't it, Toby? Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, how about um, let's try some alcohol ink. Now, those fumes, I would worry about you mixing. The alcohol ink and the bleach? Yeah. Hmm. Well, if I start acting funny here. Does anybody have Doug's phone number? I was just to say that. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> He's in an appointment. He won't answer his phone anyway. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah, that's a combination I, I would not feel comfortable trying myself. Really? Alcohol and bleach. Yep. Okay. Um, ammonia and bleach. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to do a quick search. <laughs> Mark, you want uh -oh. to know how we'll know if you start acting funny. <laughs> Oh, you guys don't make me laugh so hard. Oh, Margie, oh, that was uh, awesome. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. 
Oh, look, that's the first thing. What happens if you mix alcohol and bleach? Uh, bleach and rubbing alcohol create chloroform. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> okay. no. Is it rubbing? Oh, okay, all right, we won't do it. How dangerous is bleach and isopropyl alcohol? Let's see. Otherwise, Margie's going to blow up, she says. Edna's that's going to blow up. Bleach and isopropyl alcohol will undergo a number of reactions. One of the most significant is that it will create chloroform. <laughs> All right. You guys don't want me to um, breathe in chloroform? I'd rather not. <laughs> Everybody you'll, know, that. you'll know, Margie, because it causes dizziness, loss of judgment, loss of consciousness, and a host of other potential problems. Oh, yeah, you're losing conscious would be different. <laughs> you know, you're normal, weird. Oh, all right. I'm moving the alcohol ink to the side. Darn it, I really wanted to try that one. Thanks, I, I, I really did want to try that one. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, all right. Well, the Google said it's not a good idea, so I won't do it. Well, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. Let's get some more. Let's try. Look at this one. It's a. wonder what would happen if we did it on this gray side, too. We'll have to try that. But first, we move the plastic paper away since we're not going to do the alcoholing. Oh, Edna, I hope you're okay. Uh oh, what? It's, um, she went through a, a bunch of verticals. She, she might go outside for a while. Oh, no. Uh, uh oh. Edna, what did you mix? Hopefully not alcohol ink. And hopefully I'm in a very well ventilated room with two fans going on me. So uh, at high speed. So Hopefully, um, yeah, if you're smelling, I don't even smell the bleach. If you're smelling the bleach, then yeah, you may want to step outside and suck in some fresh air. Okay, so let's try. Did I just drop one on the floor? I did. No, she, meant, I, she just came back and said, she just had about a, a vertigo as a, that she just got over. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I know she's dealt with that in the past. Yeah. I know she has. So, okay. So let's do this. Let's see if this. Yes, I know. Toby, that, I can see you, Toby. Definitely. Hi, Toby. Toby, if, um, if you type something in that you want to make sure Glennis reads out loud to me, Type it in all caps. Then it's easier for her to see. And if she's not seeing that, then we just have to tell her to pay more attention to chat. <laughs> <laughs> more attention to chat, less attention to craft. <laughs> okay, so let's pick some distress ink here. Let's pick three colors maybe that will be pretty. These are all ones that I just haven't used much. That's why I pulled them out. Did I really not pull out a red at all? Hmm. All right. Um, that's pretty orange. Is that one? That's pretty close to the same, but that's a little darker. So let's do that one. Toby, I went back and looked. I can't see you sending me anything except can you see me? Uh, I saw her name pop up before. Yeah. You don't see a message from her? Not not that she's done in chats because she said she, she had done that. I saw her name pop up in chat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but she's not. She said she did do the cap thing. Oh, well, maybe it didn't hold the caps. Yeah, and you know with YouTube what, what's going to come through and what's right. not. 
I mean, you try if you can try to watch for them, even if they're not capitalized. Oh, I am. Oh. Okay, and if they capitalize them, then it helps. Oh no, I'm watching anyways. Oh, you are not. You're painting. <laughs> oh, yeah. what, what are you painting? I'm painting seashells. Ooh, that looks fun. I'm making them all rusted. You didn't know seashells could be rusted. Oh, love that. Okay, this is abandoned coral. And then I'm going to add spun sugar. Spun sugar is not attaching very well. I have a darker pink. Let's try kitsch flamingo on that. I think that these, when you get these backings of packages, that they are just slightly coated. And that coating makes it a little more difficult for things to stick to. I could have probably roughed it up a little, maybe even covered it in gesso. But, um, is that spun sugar? Yeah. Okay. And let's try some squeezed lemonade down here and see if that... Oh, there we go. That's pretty. Okay. All right. So there we've got three colors. Now, Laura, let's get that stencil. Get three stencils here. Hmm. We might be able to try more than one on this if I can disentangle them. Put this one right here. And I think we'll try one of these little triangle. Um, makeup sponges so that I can pat that. I'm going to use this one just because it's right here. So let's see. You're patting directly with the gel? I am. Yep. I stuck the makeup sponge. Wow. It's already turning white. Stuck the makeup sponge in to the gel and patting it. And it, it's not turning the sponge color. Look at that. It's not picking up the paint, and so it's just removing it. It's literally bleaching. That's kind of cool, because I wondered if it would just like pick up the pick up the ink, you know, so we see the white underneath it. And it doesn't appear to be doing that. Now this one has a lot of this one has a lot of design. Probably needs something that's not quite so close, but. That's kind of cool. I don't know how that'll show up on camera, but I think the problem with that is that the gel is going to, the bleach is going to bleed a little bit because it is paper, so it's going to absorb it, and then it just kind of spreads. So maybe we can try this over and over. Let's try it a little bit differently. Maybe not quite so much, and maybe just here and there, just to get some of the pattern. Julie, Julie suggests that you wear gloves right now. I do have some gloves. I've been careful not to get it on my hands. Um, Laura, and not, gets, Laura but, says a chunky, dry, a more a chunky stencil. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because even just doing it in here and there, it's such a fine stencil. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna stick that in the pan of water so I don't have to get bleach on me. I have this one, but I don't know if this one's even chunky enough. I might have to go grab another one. Okay, uh, Edna has sent you a couple of photos. Okay, perfect. In one second, I will pull them up. And then she says, chemical burn, put glove on. All right, I'll go get gloves. Got them right across the desk. Okay, let's see. Oh, cool. Okay, let me see. Spirit Shimmer lifted the shimmer. 
Ooh, okay, so she's using a uh, shimmer spray. Check this out. This is cool looking. Oh, that looks great, Edna. Yeah, I like that, Edna. Look at that one. That looks like a tornado off in the distance. Love it. That's what she's using. Woo! Bright colors. So this one looks like the same color that I, that brand new one, uh, Marina, that I put down. And then um, looks like she squeezed it on it just like I did. Got the same kind of uh, ant farm or worm, worm hole effect. All right. I'm going to grab gloves. Uh, Glennis, can you entertain the troops for just one second? And I'll be, well, one minute. <laughs> trying to think there's any zombie jokes you guys haven't heard yet, but you probably are sick of those by now. Um, I am playing around right now with uh, the patinas that we were working with uh, a couple days ago. And I'm making a real mess, and my hands are all grungy, and I'm having a lot of fun. But I don't have any bleach, so I wasn't going to go buy some. Tap dance, Glennis. Oh, right. Oh, show us a kitty. That's a good idea. Oh, we got right here. There, this is Connie Cat. She's our old lady. She's our, oh, there you are. She's 18 years old, 19 years old. She's a real sweetheart. And she's just, she's a Bermilla. Julie might, you know, a Bermilla because they're from Australia. And she is a, just the sweetest going little old lady in the world. And then, oh, she's going to try and grab my puppy. But he, she didn't know why I was grabbing her and she took off. And it's very quiet now. It's Burmilla, because the cross between a Burmese and a, originally was back 40 or so years ago, so they've been around quite a while, uh, between a Burmilla and a, uh, uh, or a Burmese and a Chinchilla per Persian. But her coat is super soft, it's just the softest thing ever. thought maybe it'd be wise to go wash my hands with soap before putting the gloves on. And let's see here. As I refuse to tap dance, we need you back. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> that was Margie. Uh, um, Glennis, you were supposed to tap dance and entertain them. That's what I said. And I refuse. Oh, you do. <laughs> oh, oh no. I showed them Connie, and I tried to show them the puppy, and the puppy took off. And <laughs> I've got some gloves right here. Let's see. That's. I have no idea what size these are. I have several different kinds all shoved into one box. The more you work with this stuff, the more I'm glad I'm not doing it. <laughs> Uh, all right, I need to get, let's see, what kind of stencil I need, do I need? I need something that has doesn't have lots of little holes, but something that has fewer big holes, right? <clears throat> oh, no, Edna. Ouch, I'm so sorry. Laura was wondering, do you have any mask stencils? Those ah, um, yes, whether they are close at hand is another story, but they might be. And she sent you a text. What? Edna sent another message saying she sent you a text. Yes, I just read it, Edna. That, that's, that's scary, Edna. I hope you're okay. 
Okay, I'm looking through a few stencils here. <laughs> Laura says, new rule, only one person with an M name allowed. Margie, you're now Smarge. Margie. <laughs> Margie, you're now who? It's Margie. Oh. <laughs> Only one person can be called M. <laughs> okay, this might work. I've got, okay, here's two that I think will work. I need to turn up my volume a little bit so I can hear you better. There we go. Let's try it on the on the gray side. Hi, Gigi. Hey, Gigi. Let's try it on the gray side of this um, gift box. And see what happens. Um, how about some villainous potion? And some kitsch flamingo. And see some salty ocean that's a pretty one okay i think it's, it soaks in and dries faster on the gray side it doesn't have any coating on it like the white side does yeah I don't know if the look will end up being the same, but we'll find out. All right, let me hold this stencil up so I can see who is where. How many, because I can't get them all on here. So what, how many can I get? Can I get that? Let me get those three in the bottom. I can't, oh, hang on, I gotta cut this bottom off here going to keep the stencil from laying flat. Well, the little fairies turned out okay. That's the stencil. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the oh, fairy no. stencil I'm going to use. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh. Okay, so... We'll put that down flat. See how many fairies we can get on to this, even though it's not a regular size. There we go. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter which side had it on now because I got gloves on. <laughs> well, this one will just get the fairies' legs. This one, we should be able to get the whole fairy. I'm curious if it'll work the same on the on the gray side. It might not. Well, it, because of absorbing different, you'll just have to see. Yeah, yeah, that's like working with gray board. It might not. It might not give us the same effect. If not, I've got another. I've got a Manila one here and another white one, and we'll. Or we can grab some white. Um, white cardstock right here and try that. Laura says, if nothing else, you'll find a new system for cleaning your stencils. <laughs> With bleach. <laughs> okay, give it a minute. Um, give it a few minutes. It's, it is changing. It's taking a little bit longer, but can you see this one over here? The light is not as good on her, but if the blue, she's darker, but. Yeah, she, something's happening. Kind of like a Tinkerbell. And this one's sitting down. There's her wings. That one's standing up. This one's sitting, I guess, and the butterfly's flying out of her hand. And this one's flying. You only see her legs. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that one's turning out quite nicely. And that's the one I think is not going to show up on TV because of the color. Edna says, take a picture of the of the stencil with a white paper in the background and you have a sheet to play with. It looked really good. Well, you know, let's do, okay, so that's on the gray. I'm gonna let it sit there a minute because I believe 
that the gray, like some other types of paper, needs longer. And the longer it sits there, the more it will change. So we're not going to wait for it. We're going to go right along and play with something else. Um, mm -mm -mm. Laura is saying that the gray side looks like it's much more textured than the other side. Yeah, because there's no coating at all on it. Yeah, but it's showing it's showing up real that way. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And depending on what stencil you use, that could give you a really cool grungy look because of that texture, huh? That's what I think anyway. Julie uh, says Doug is going to come home and be fumigated. <laughs> Uh, nothing like um, when he came home after we did the, the uh, fingernail polish, the nail polish stuff. Oh, my gosh. The really? house, Yeah. Oh, yeah. The house smelled like nail polish. I couldn't even stand it. It was, I did a lot. I, I filmed and then I did some of my own and then we did a live and yeah. That, I, would that is, the, I would have thought the bleach would be worse. No, the nail polish was super strong. Okay. Um, I'll have to turn it sideways, but we can get them Julie, all. Julie, Lucy is, is safely in another room. She's not. Lucy is room. safely in another room. Yes, she is. Okay, this time, the last one I used the gel um, toilet cleaner. This one I'm going to use the regular um, gel cleaner. Oh, yeah. And this is on this is on a manila folder. So you'll see the difference of how quickly it turns as opposed to the gray board. So gray board, um, I know people have asked me what is gray board because like Stamperia will have gray board, some of the um, gears that Glennis did the other day and probably is doing today um, <laughs> are, are gray board. And the gray board is like, um, say you take, um, Stamperia and a lot of other companies, they will have like a six by 12 sheet of um, die cuts that pop out. They're like chipboard and they pop out and they might be sticky on the back, might not be, but either way they pop out um, and they're thick chipboard and they have the glossy top. If you peel that glossy top off and then put that glossy top down somewhere and just use that so it's not dimensional, what you have left is the same shape without that glossy top on it. That's gray board. So it's she like, was, <clears throat> go ahead. She was asking if you have to use distress ink, could she use her stamping up pads? Yeah, absolutely you can. I've got some archival ink we're gonna try right here too. Okay, so this was distress ink. And there's our there's well, they print out really cute. Yeah. So this is on the gray side of a gift box. It's just taking a little bit longer, and they will never get as white because there is no white, you know, in, yeah. even in the core there. But this, it bleached it right back to the manila, but it's actually lighter than, lighter than the manila color. Now, you're not going to get like a really clean edge on the stencil typically because it's going to run. You know, it's going to absorb. You're putting it on paper of some sort and it's going to soak into the paper and absorb. So it's going to go under the stencil edges a little bit. Your small areas like the hands and feet, they turned out okay. Yeah, they didn't. They're not bad. I tried to go kind of light just so that there wouldn't be a lot to soak in but this one is really cute isn't she <laughs> and her feet turned out and you can even see her face i can see her nose on this one so they're not bad they're not bad okay so i'm going to set that one up there this one up there and i want to try um let me see if i can grab some white cardstock right here Ooh, what do you think it would do on stone paper 
Um, let's see, cardstock white. Oh, that's over here by the printer. That's where I keep all the white cardstock. Um, let's get some fairly heavy weight. Just grab a handful of it. <clears throat> and let's try some archival ink. Let's do some uh, I need to refill. There's black soot. We'll do a little hickory smoke. Look, there was a little bit of bleach on my glove when I grabbed the paper. Oh, look, I sat there without moving it. Look how dark it got. <laughs> See, you, can, you can get it darker by just holding it in place. If you want really dark spots. And then we'll do some watering can. Oh, I didn't realize that was going to be darker than hickory oh, smoke. I, I've I never used, used watering can. I don't know yeah. that one at all. I haven't either. And I thought it, it's a, uh, a gray type, kind of. It's a dark gray. And I thought it was going to be a little bit lighter than hickory smoke. But it's a little bit darker. So it would be um, the black soot and then the watering can. Now I know, because I haven't ever yeah, used it. Definitely good to know. Yeah. I like it. It's like um, a charcoal gray. I like it a lot. Just never tried it. And then let's add to that archival ink cactus flower. And this is literally the color of so many cactus flowers. I love this. And crocus are like that. that looks yeah. like um, is anybody from Arizona here? This color blooming on the cactuses all the time is just gorgeous. Okay, so that's archival ink. How do we want to do this? Let's do this with the, the water brush that we have filled with bleach. And I make sure some bleach comes through because there might still be water in the brush itself. There we go. And remember, it is a gel, so it might not come out of this as easily as water and it is kind of spreading but laura was suggesting layering the stencils background and then one stencil with ink and another stencil with bleach oh that's a cool idea that's a great idea i like it a lot that kind of leads into what I want to show you about um, actually painting a picture with bleach. You can take this and just make some cool designs here and there off of the stencil. Have you tried writing with that? Gigi, see. was that your question about the, the ink pads? Marianne said yes, that would work just fine. Yep, the Stampin' Up! ones will work just fine. Um, I will try going over it just once and see. I feel like I'll probably need to go it a couple of times because it doesn't come out as fluid as the um, as water does because it's a gel. But maybe it's coming out fluid enough. Gigi said no. That's yes, the only she, question I see, Gigi, is the one about um, the... Oh, you ask about your Stampin' Up! pads, and yes, they will 
they will work just fine. Could you resend your your second question? I don't see it coming through at all. I'm sorry. If there was another question, go ahead and answer that, or I'm ask that again in caps. HPP create. It. Um, I think with liquid bleach, it would work a whole lot better because I'm pushing it to get some down there, but remember that it's gel. So it's not going to come out as easy as liquid. But you can read, you can um, re read but it. Though. Can, yeah. And you can control it. Gigi said, just did. Um, That's all I see. Um, I know that. And Julie Here it is. Earlier. It's only on cardstock or cardboard. So she's asking, can you do it on other mediums? Oh, yeah. You can do it on anything. You can actually um, tape down a shirt, a T-shirt, and take a stencil out and, and use bleach and stencil on a design on your T-shirt. Absolutely. Yeah, you can do it on anything. You could do it on fabric, on um, any kind of paper. Any kind of paper won't matter. Thin paper, thick paper, watercolor paper, it'll all work. It'll all work. And now I'm curious to get some liquid bleach in here because it would flow better like the water would. Now it took, I drew this and couldn't even see it. It took a minute for that to show up, but it just did. Um, yeah, you just... Uh, How do you get the bleach smell out of the final project from Gigi? Well, I would set it outside, but I'm not even smelling bleach, honestly. Now, I know I just had COVID. I know I'm still a little congested, but not very congested. But I I was still tasting and smelling things. I didn't lose my taste or smell. But I'm not I'm not smelling bleach at all. And maybe it's because there's just such a small amount. It's possible. It's because just because there's such a small amount. So if anybody else has um, some advice on how to get this smell yeah. away from a project. I would probably set it out in the sunshine. Definitely let it air out. If you're smelling bleach, definitely let it air out. And if you can set it out in the sunshine, that would be um, probably the best. But I'm not using a lot. I mean, the amount of bleach that I poured out was just a very small amount. And... That's part of the reason, you know, just to not have uh, very much. You can also use a regular brush. So let's say we take a regular brush like this. And we want to do another line. I can't tell where I ended, so let me wait a minute for it to show up. <laughs> I think right there. So, yeah, I think, and especially with the gel. If I took a pointed, a small, maybe somewhat firm, I don't know if I have one, pointed brush would be easier to write with because you could just keep dipping it as opposed to the water brush that's full of bleach, but yet it doesn't flow as easily. Um,
So this is not a very firm brush. I think if it was firm, it would be a little easier. And if it was a finer point. You're using synthetic brushes? Synthetic. If you use natural brushes, it will eat away. Uh, it's like they're animal hair. Natural brushes are animal hair. So if you use natural brush, it's going to just eat it away. Put some fish in here. Put some little fishes here. <laughs> Another little fishy here. There we go. Hopefully that'll actually look like a fish. It's weird because on certain colors like this pink, you can't see it while you're drawing it. We can't see what you're doing right now? Oh, you can't. So, sorry. <laughs> I'm just putting fishies down here. But on the pink, you can't see it while you're drawing. It takes a couple, um, 30 seconds, like right here. I'm drawing it, but I can't see what I'm drawing where on this one, it goes almost immediately. And this one takes, this is where I drew right here. And you can see how long it's gonna take for it to show up. Yes, Gigi, both type of, of gel, of bleach that Marianne is using are gels. Yes, so one is the gel toilet bowl cleaner and one is the gel household cleaner, but it is the gel. There's the fishy I just drew. He's just now showing up. <laughs> and that's a good 30 seconds, so you can't see it. And that's on the pink, but I noticed that when I did something on the black, it showed up a lot quicker. Maybe it depends on how thick the black is. Okay, so let me show you something here. I'm going to grab a piece of watercolor. Let's see, I should keep separate the ones that have actually had bleach on them. Do I have? I think I have some watercolor. <clears throat> I've also got some tags here, some uh, craft tags, some black tags, some white tags that we could try some different things on the tags to see how it responds to know if you want to do something. But if you do a large piece of something and then cut it up into tags, Okay, so let's see here. We'll use half of this. Yeah, I don't have any GG, I don't have any bleach in the house at all. <laughs> so she's watching chat and working on something else. Oh, oh, another thing I wanted to use. We need to do this too. These are um, these are inks that I use with my glass pen. And let's see. Are they water-based? I think so. I think so. Hmm. I think so. <laughs> Pretty sure so. I do think it responds better to the things that are water-based than the things that are not based on what we've tried. Um, we also have these Patty, these stains by Patty Pockets that I want to try. And they're water-based, are they not? As far as I know, yes. Okay. All right. So first, I want to try something on this, um, this watercolor. And it's going to need a few minutes to completely dry. So we'll go ahead and let's see. Those had, I want one that has not had gel or uh, bleach on it at all. We are going to go ahead and get this started here. Okay, I'm going to use, um, this is just black ink that I use with, none of these are black. They're a little bit bigger for dipping in, so I wanted to use one of these, but um, they're not black. They're all different colors. So I'm going to dip into this black ink that I use to write with my glass pen or any of your calligraphy pens. And I'm going to just cover this watercolor paper here. I have a really large bottle that I was going to use because it would, I could get a large brush into it and 
and um, it's Japanese calligraphy ink. And I thought, oh, perfect. And I forgot that it's gold. It's black gold or gold black. I forget which they call it. But when you put it on, it's black like this. And then this gold shot. Glennis, you have some. Have you used it? I don't think I have the black gold. I've got the gold and I haven't used it. And after it rises, um, it's golden. Oh, maybe not. It's golden black. But so you put yeah, it on and it's gold. black. Okay. And then after, after it dries, the gold rises up. And so you see this gold with the black. I'm like, well, that won't work because I need a black background. So <laughs> that sounds like that. It is kind of cool. I can show you what it looks like. Let's see. Marianne, it sounds like something I need. <laughs> um, I may be able to get it for the shop. It's kind of like that. It okay. goes on black, but then the gold rises, and so you have a gold, a black gold. That's very different looking. Yeah, and it's very cool. It's um, it's it's literally a Japanese calligraphy ink. So when they write with it and it's black and then it dries and then you get the gold shimmer through the black on their calligraphy. And that's why their characters look so cool. Definitely need some in my box. <laughs> I only have one jar right now, a jar, bottle, whatever it is, but I will see if I can get them for the shop because that it is very cool. I like it. It's such a different effect. Yeah. And it wasn't very expensive and it's a larger bottle than these little teeny tiny ones. So you can dip a brush into it and it's going to last forever. Or it actually has a little, little um, spout thingy that you could pour some into a, a little dish and it will last forever. I've been using a long time. Okay, so need to let that dry. That won't take very long, actually. That's getting pretty good already. So let me set that there. Now I want to, um, is that wide enough? It might Linda be. Linda Cook would like one of those too. Who? Linda Cook. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. <laughs> like one of those too. I don't Will like you write those down for me? Oh, wow. Okay, let's see. Now I'm going to put some bleach right across the center of the black. This, this brush is kind of little. I really do need a larger brush that won't take forever. Uh, Julie, was, I'd like to see the label on the bottle. The brand is Yasutomo. I'm going to take a screen it's print. Okay. It's a traditional Chinese ink. I said Japanese, didn't I? Yes, it's, you did. It's a traditional Chinese ink, golden black. And I'm going to contact them to see if I can get a better price buying it in bulk for the shop. Yeah, because I've, I've, I've never I've, seen that mixture of, you know, the two. Yeah, it's, it's the first one that I've had like that, and it's cool. It is cool. Okay, I'm going to let this completely dry. How cool that is. Does that look like a sunset already? And all I that. Like how all it's that, bright and dark at the same time. Yeah, exactly. It looks like it's on fire. And all that is is bleach on this little black ink. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside and let that completely dry. And we were going to do um, the patty pockets. Let's try those and see how they are affected by bleach. These are so cool. I am loving these. I'm so glad. Thank you. Gigi, buddy. what also wants to be added to that list? Okay. Can you keep, can you make a list for me, please? I'm going to have to. Okay. <laughs> Yes, Julie, I'll send you a screenshot of that, that I took. I'll send that to you. 
Let me just get my pen out so I can start writing these down. Whatever price you find it at, let me know so I can use that to try to negotiate a lower price buying it in bulk for the shop. Okay, so there is the vintage. Make sure I get that on. I would not want that to spill. Okay, and this one is the Lullaby Blue. And let's see if I can add that. And I'm just putting this on um, a white cardstock. And this is just a stain that you can put over, like I made a tag and then I put this vintage one over the top of the entire tag and instantly the entire thing was transformed to a vintage look. It's very cool. Okay. Maybe you can even get petty pockets for the shop. That oh, would, that would be great. I yeah, would love that. That'd be very cool. Because I, I know she's got a lot of colors, doesn't she? Uh, she's got three or four now. She's got blue, pink, the original, and uh -huh. she likes green. Okay. This one is Lily Pod Green. Um, I thought Lily Pods were brighter green. This is more, looks more to me like a teal. I love it. Looks more like teal, but boy, it's pretty. And you could go over it a extra times, let it dry, go over it again and make it darker even. Okay, but let's just try that. Because at this point, we just want to see what our use that one what our response is to the bleach uh i never like to know if you have any more uh glass things glass pens uh i do not i may get them and put them in the shop uh, because when I buy them in bulk, I can get a much better price. Can you move your paper up, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, the camera is always funky on this table because it doesn't reach as far on the table as it does the other. So there we go. And yes, Linda Cook, uh, Marianne said patty pockets. The one that um, uh, we think of as book page patty. Does. Patty, patty Veramontes. Yeah, yeah. she... Um, created these stains by Patty Pockets. They're very cool. Look at their, um, they're instantly responding and um, just bleaching it white. That's cool. Okay, so um, I wanna try some of these inks. These are the, uh, that's a pink, this is an aqua. I'm going to set this aside for a minute to completely dry and do this on a whole new sheet here. So pink, aqua, magenta. These are some really pretty colors. Red, uh, lime, and yellow. Okay. Have you tried putting a, a thicker brush in the bleach and then kind of smooching it around? Um, no, let's do that on the ink. That's that's a great idea. Okay, let's see here. I think I'm going to take all the lids off and just line them up. Oops, don't break, don't tear off. Have these nice rubber stoppers on them. Most of the inks do. They don't want that little round part to tear off. Oh, that one came off easily. Okay. 
Okay. We'll see. I'm, I'm not even changing the order. I don't even know what order they're in. So uh, let's see how this all looks. I guess I could put them in rainbow order. That goes up there. There is, there is a yellow. There isn't an orange. There's a red and a pink, a magenta. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just leave them like this. We'll make our own rainbow. Okay. So here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to dip, hopefully, oh, shoot. I didn't, I didn't even, um, I didn't uh, stir some of them. So I'm wondering if I can just stir like this, if that'll work. Okay, this is the pink. That's pretty. They have a, it has a nice shimmer to it. Yeah, that's better. We can see it now. This is ink that I would use with my glass pen or a calligraphy pen. Uh, let me see if I can just clean it off a bit with my towel and go straight into the aqua. I'm gonna try stirring them around just with the brush and hope it works. Of course, I'm getting half the thing. Oh, that's gorgeous. Love that one. Aqua. Isn't that blue pretty? Very bright. Yeah. And this one's the red. The shimmer is on the bottom. That's what separates. So if I don't stir it around, we'll get the color and we won't get that shimmer. There's a little gold in the shimmer. The red one is probably the easiest one to see. The gold in that shimmer. Um, your paper is still your, uh, your problem is where your inks are. If uh -huh. you can put the inks up okay, and, and then put the paper where the inks are. Okay. People are having trouble with that. Okay. Okay. Is that better? Yep. That's way better. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. All right, and the magenta. So if I just stuck it in there, I could ju just get the color. By stirring it around, I'm getting the shimmer off the bottom mixed up with it. And that would probably be a good test to try it both ways to see how it works with just the color and with the shimmer in it. Because I wonder if the shimmer will act like um, those Nouveau sprays did and resist it. I also brought out some tattered angels that we could try. <clears throat> these are gorgeous colors. I love using these with my pen, just writing in a book. They're so vibrant and unique. They're unique because they have that gold um, shimmer added to them. And with that gold shimmer, it just gives them like a whole other look. Just takes them to another level. Okay. Oh, that, that green is oh. beautiful green. Isn't that pretty? Watch this yellow. You're going to love this yellow. Wow. I know. I'm not normally a huge yellow fan, and I love this yellow. It is so pretty. Well, they're also very, very vibrant. That is cool. Oh, and you can see the, the gold... Shimmer that's added to each of them now, kind of, sort of. Yeah, in the red, to see, you can see it. Yeah, easiest to see, I think, on the red and the magenta. But they all have that gold shimmer that really amps them up. So it, your writing looks really cool if you're writing in a book or a journal and, you know, using that. Okay, so then what, what you wanted me to take a, a brush a, a thicker brush? Yeah, one that that's as stiff, a stiff brush, like a little dry brush with a. Okay. And then you stick it in the bleach, and then just pounce it like a dry, like you're dry brushing. So like a a stipple brush, not like one like this, but like a stippling brush. Well, one that's that's stiff. That's stiff enough to pounce. Let's see. Yeah. Can try both of those. Okay. 
And then just uh, pounce it around? Yeah, just directly from the bleach. Oh. Now, why did the green go all weird? The green went blue. The yeah. bleach bleached it blue. The, it did not change the color of this at all, so it didn't carry any pigment from one to the other. The pink bleached to a peach, a lighter pink. It's kind of a peachy. It looked, they're more like dots than pouncies. <laughs> the yellow bleached to kind of a flesh tone. Wow. The green bleached to a blue. The magenta doesn't seem to be as much on the magenta. It's kind of gone pink. Yeah, to a lighter magenta or a pink. And the gold really jumps out on the magenta if that happens to be in a... Okay, the red, it's like it bleached the red away and you see the gold. I can see the shiny gold. And then the blue bleached to a lighter blue. That's interesting. That is really quite effective. Isn't that fascinating? You know what bleaches really, really well, guys? Construction paper. If you have construction paper, you know, used with your kids for all kinds of, or grandkids for all kinds of projects, construction paper, cheap construction paper, bleach is great. Okay, so I just drew a strip Everybody across the going top. Wow. <laughs> wow, yeah. It is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. So, and these colors are, are gorgeous and vibrant, and it, that really makes me want to, you know, like if you cover the background with something and then and then you come along and actually, you know, draw some kind of a design or... Um, a cool stencil, you know, with a big mandala over it or something on it, um, you know, or just draw something that you like to draw. It'd be very cool because of the vibrancy of these. Okay, we'll give that a minute. And it's interesting how some of them turn almost immediately that green turns almost immediately and others take a minute to actually change. Yeah, uh, the yellow right now you can hardly see the change because it's not as, you know, the other colors are showing a more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let me get it up closer and I'll bet you can. Or you can see it, it's just not as vibrant as the other color. Yeah, yeah, there's not as big a contrast. Yeah, that's that's a word. There we yeah, go. there is not as big a contrast. I, in fact, um, the yellow color here is the same as what the green did right here. And the same as what the red did over here. It's kind of a flesh tone with that gold sparkling um, from the shimmer. It does in real life, it makes the yellow where the yellow is really super vibrant because of the contrast. Where some of the others, when I look at them, what I see first is the bleached part. The bleached part jumps out at me and on the yellow one, the yellow part jumps out at me. That is pretty interesting. Okay, let's go back and check these patty pockets after they've had a minute. I like that drippy one. Yeah. Yeah. This looks like a chat bubble. You could put it on a card. Do a card. Yeah. Make a little chat bubble and then write something in it. Yeah. Balloons. <laughs> so it, it, it went right down to the paper, it looks like. Yeah, just bleach the color right out. And they have, um, this one has a pink edge, like a tiny, let me get up there. There, you can see it, I think. A tiny pink rim. 
on this color. There. Can you see that tiny pink rim? Yeah, now we can. Yeah, it's just very faint, but it's yep. just all around the edge there. Yep. And then this it's the same on this one. It's a lighter blue, and so that uh, is much, much lighter. And on the vintage, it is vintage, so it really doesn't stand out at all. But this is interesting because this looks like a magenta against that teal, which is lily pad green, but it, it's really a dark, stormy teal. A stormy night. That's It's really pretty. That is cool. Very cool looking. Okay. And it'll be interesting to watch these as you, I mean, they happen immediately, but if you watch them and let them completely dry, they change. They change as they completely dry. So let's see. Where are our fairies? Let me go back here to a couple from the beginning. That was the fairies on the gray side. Oh, they've yellowed out now. They have. And you can see where the outline is. So you could actually outline them with a, a marker or a pen and do something with them if you wanted to. I still really like that one. You now have made zombie fairies. Oh, Glynis, zombie fairies. Yes. <laughs> okay, this is the one where it did not soak in and bleach it because this is shimmer spray but it does dry on it and it leaves okay glennis this is perfect for zombies because they look they look like lesions they look they like look good scabs, scars lesions they would be perfect on zombie <laughs> they really really do <laughs> that's kind of funny um what's that one this was the very first one it should now be completely dry pretty thick bleached areas. Okay, so the last thing, I want to go back to this one that we did the black ink on. First, let me take a minute and put the tops on these. That's a good idea. <laughs> yes, knowing me, it is a very good idea. <laughs> uh... And I'd hate to tip one of these over because I really do like this ink. I don't know, this, um, this might be ink that I, I might be able to get as well. It's not brand new, but if they still carry it. I don't know if I'd want all the colors, but I sure would like that red. I think they came in... Um, I think I bought them in two separate packs of three, if I remember right. Yeah, the red is really pretty. Okay, so this is the one we just did with the black ink and then bleached across the center. And all the bright color leached out. Yeah, and that, yeah. Uh, it was like a vibrant, fiery red sky. Yeah, it was a sunset. Yep, and as it dried, that kind of went away. Here's one that I did earlier. Ignore the center line. I started on it um, before it was dry. So that was my mistake there. Let me see if I can send that off a bit. You have to let this dry completely before you can work with it. This one is archival ink. I just took the black archival ink, rubbed it over the whole thing, and then bleached down the center and accidentally dropped a drop of bleach there, which is perfect because it looks like a moon, I think. <laughs> I love how it's, it's retained the color though. It hasn't faded out. Of the moon? No, the, the yellow in the middle, it's still there. It's not faded out like on the other one. Uh, well, it it is it totally faded to this just because of the different kinds of ink. Okay. Yes. 
So this one being the calligraphy ink, and this one being the black archival ink. The black soot archival ink. That was the difference in those two. Because I love the second one best. That that is that here. Kind of speckled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. I didn't um, go over it as hard to make it, you know, completely solid. Um, but I'm looking for a brush. And I'm going to try to do this one with a brush and the other one with my ink pen. Well, that, that, that is what you could frame it. That looks so cool. Hopefully it'll be better when I finish, but let's also quarter to two. Okay. That, this is our last thing. I need to get these out of the way because I'm going to try to do them at the same time and I'm going to do, hopefully, where did I just set the brush? <laughs> set the brush. Need to make sure I'm using that. Yeah. Not one that was in bleach. Okay, I'm going to do that one with the brush, and I'm hoping to be able to do this one with my um, calligraphy glass pen. They have different properties, and so it will come out different. And the look of the calligraphy pen is really the look that I like a lot with this. Okay. Oh, cool. Sorry, I have to focus a little, so you might have to talk. Oh, no, that's looking really <laughs> neat. I would never have ever thought of doing that, and that looks really cool. When you said you could do pictures, I could not visualize at all what, what you meant. Yeah, the entire background with bleach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's... That's looking really good. And you're just using black ink? And this is just black ink with my uh, calligraphy pen. And we can try to do the same thing with a brush. It's going to be much more difficult because this is very fine here. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole lot easier with the, you know, with the fine tip. Yeah. So. Uh, there's spots I can feel that are not 100% dry. But that's okay. Maybe use a brush on the other one. Yeah, I'm going to use the brush on this one over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, I did the center line with the brush and I'm going to yeah. try to do the whole thing with the brush. I really love that splotch yeah. that was accidental. And maybe I can just get one over here on purpose. Okay, so let's get a little bit of brush down here on the bottom. Let's see, whoops, did not want that big blob of paint. Ink. Let's see if I can pick that up. Well, you know what? We just eight, eight, six, eight, six branches, branches out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little more bleach on it. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I just got a little too much ink on my pen because it doesn't take a whole lot.
Yeah, Julie, I don't know where the echo's coming from. I hear it too. I don't hear an echo, do you? I just do once in a while and I don't know why. Hmm. With those other inks, you could add all sorts of uh, leaves and stuff. Yeah, you could do, um, this is intended to be like a, a shadow um, yeah. sunset kind of thing, but mm -hmm. you could actually do a daytime scene. Okay, and then what we need to do is get our reflection, get our reflection of these guys. And that's going to be the same thing opposite here, except much more wavy in the water. Every time you dip your pen in, I'm worried that's going to fall over. The uh, ink? Yeah. Oh, it's pretty stable, actually. Yeah, those look like reflections. Do they? Yep. <laughs> I have to just do it and not think about it, because if I think about it, I'm like, that doesn't look anything like a reflection. <laughs> a couple little things out here and here. We need a couple little birds up in the sky. And now oh, that got that little bird is kind of too big, but that's okay. Well, from here it looks fine. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Too, bad. It's too bad you didn't get a moon in that one, though. Well, we're going to get a moon in that one. It dropped before I meant to drop it, so oh, don't, know, yeah. don't know how round it's going to be, but maybe I can help it. Well, if it. it's not totally round, it's because of the clouds. Yeah, that's true. Well, that looks great. I'm, oh, that's, no, that looks great. There we go. Okay, so that is with the um, calligraphy pen. So some of you wondered what to do with your glass pens. There's something you could do with your glass pens. And it's nice and fine, so a whole lot, a whole lot easier to do with the glass pen than it is going to be to do it with the brush. I will try to do this one with the brush. And in fact, I'm going to see if I've got a finer, a finer brush. Laura system. said it could be an alien spaceship waiting <laughs> to take over with laser beams. That's true. <laughs> it could. Um, yeah. If it was headed for um, horror con, <laughs> probably exactly what it would be. Oh, it's funny. Okay. I'm just looking to see if I have close by. I thought I did. A finer because this doesn't have to be um, this one doesn't have to be synthetic because I could, even, uh, I could even use a toothpick I don't know that might be finer right not I've got a finer one over here but I already stuck it in the bleach so I don't want yeah. to do that so all right let's see what we can do with this guy See, this is much thicker, so much more difficult to do. But the reflections look more like reflections. And if you're using a true calligraphy pen, you can turn it to the wide side and then okay. the skinny side. And so that's what I would do on there. Mm. But I could go back with on those and make that a little bit thicker across here because that's it does seem kind of thin. But the hard part for me is going to be the trees just getting them to be super super thin okay toby i'm glad you could come in and join us bye toby this might work this might 
I, this oh, that's so hard for me to just barely, barely touch the end to get the um, to get it thin. Because boy, I, I need a much finer, much finer brush. some brush down there that's just kind of yeah that's way too eh, way too fat it is hard with um <laughs> without a super skinny wait a minute what is right there is that a super skinny nope yeah a super Laura skinny and Margie are saying they're happy little trees yeah, they are. Julie likes this overall scene you're creating. Cool. Thank you, Julie. And you see how simple this is? I mean, I, I am not a painter. Y'all know that. I am not a painter. And if you can take this and and it's and really just you're just putting an image there. You're not really making a great tree just an image trees bushes little things if there's not enough ink on it all it does is make you know gray uh gray splotch mm -hmm. if there's too much ink on it it makes big black spots it's the, uh, i find it much easier to do with the um pen than with this brush um i will i know i've got some finer brushes i will pull out a finer brush and try it again just to see. See, I like the look of the, the brush, the, that how a lot of yeah. paint looks. Yeah, a little bit thicker. It looks a little more like a painting. Yeah. Um, this looks more like calligraphy. Yeah, Julie says you'll want to frame that. I agree. I think it's definitely worth framing. It's really pretty. Which one? Well, I think the yellow one. This one? And that's the one you're working on when she put her comment in. So I think for Julie, too, it's the yellow okay. one. So I'm going to come back here. And I want to thicken up my horizon line a little bit. And then I want to even thicken up this part that comes out here. Yes, Julie said the yellow one is the one that she likes too. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. The yellow does give that like it's the glow of the moon. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of wish that the black part was um, a little bit darker, and so we'd see more of a fade right where it started to touch the you've bleach. Got, you've got the sun rise and then the sunset. Oh! Which, this one's the sunrise? Yeah, which is it's the pale colors in the morning, how they're really pale before the sun. Yeah. Rise, and yeah. the moon is still in the sky. And then this one's the sunset. And the sun's gone just down over the edge. Wow. That's a cool way to look at it. I haven't even thought about that. Oh, this guy didn't get any, he didn't get any birds. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Gotta have some birds. When I add birds, I tend to add about a dozen. I overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Three birds over there. And that, if you don't like something, just put some bleach over it and do it again. <laughs> no, that's really great to know, to know how to do that. That's I love that effect. So this might be something just to do a 10 or 15 minute um, tutorial on just how to, you know, make art with. Hi, Julie. How to make a painting. <laughs> how to make a painting with... Uh, with bleach. If you've never thought of using bleach to paint. Yeah. 
No, because that effect is it's a very random effect, which is why it looks so natural. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's what I like about it. Oh, that's Margie what I like. The cat. Say that again. Margie says it needs a cat. <laughs> needs a black cat. It need, this one needs a um, a witch on a broom and a black cat on the back of it, right? <laughs> Coming away from the moon. Look, well, there is a black cat on the first one <laughs> down in the corner. There is? Yeah, it just blends in. Oh, he's always oh, down here. Yeah, you just yeah, blend, okay. you know, blend it in. Him. <laughs> Laura says a panther. Yeah. <laughs> here, oh, don't wreck it. Don't wreck it. Now he's down in this corner too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know why I'm doing this because I'm I'll cut it down and make it make them the exact same size because then I could frame them side by side. Sunrise, oh, sunset. I love yeah, your idea. Yeah. Sunrise, sunset. Well, that pale one just reminds me of camping, and and yeah. it's really early when you're you're camping because I'm not usually up that early. Uh huh. And, and then you just see it come through. Yep. There's the the break of dawn. Yeah. Oh, that, that is looks cool. Great. Cool. Your alarm could be going off because it's two o'clock. Y'all could do this. Y'all could do this. All you need to do is go back and watch the last 20 minutes. Yeah. And you can pause it and just do what I'm doing. It's super easy. If I can paint it, you know you can paint it. Because I am not a painter, and y'all know that. So if I can do it, then I know that you can do it. So this was fun today. Hi, Judy. You it's very nice. I didn't see you. <laughs> yes, you just came in. Good to see you. Um, you like the oh, Julie liked the white through the through the black. Yeah, I liked it too before you did oh, that. Well, sorry. I'm going to cut it off right here so that they're the same size. Mm -hmm. And so the lower part of this I left so that that does have the okay. white through it. So most that's why I said I don't know why I'm doing this because the dark that I just did is what's going to get cut off. So I'm going to do that. And then, you know what? I have never framed a piece of art I have done. This oh, might really? Be oh, cool. This might be the first. That's really cool. Yeah. That is kind of cool. It reminds me of a picture I took in, in Arizona um, from the same fishing spot. I took it one night at, the, at sunset. And then we came back the next morning to the exact same spot before sunrise and I got a, the photo of sunrise. Yeah, exactly. That's they are exactly both so cool, but so different. Two of my favorite photos ever. And they're so different of the same exact thing. So yeah. that kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm a little doing. bit bigger. But the different Sun, time of day. Well, yeah, sunset, the moon is just coming up, huh? And sunrise, the moon's just going away, going down. Yeah. So oh, I, cool. Uh, to me, they definitely look like the same picture before and after. Well, that's that's cool. Um, wow. Yeah, I guess I could place the trees the same and then and make sure that they are. But yeah, well, they're they're, cool stuff. if you're just looking at it, not you know trying to magnify, right. it, they not, look yeah. Like, yeah, not trying to analyze. Don't that they go and do anything else. I wanted to put some little brush in here because there's a lot of tall trees and no small stuff. <laughs> <laughs> don't go on with it and mess it up <laughs> oh man no i will cut it down make them the exact same size i might i might sign it um maybe i should sign it in that red oh right right over the black cat because i don't think that the yeah i don't think that the um black ink i was gonna do the black ink but i don't think the black ink will show up so <laughs> Oh boy, this was fun, guys. I hope that you got some ideas of what to do or not to do. <laughs> yeah, a lot more than what I thought. Yeah. You know what? There are still more things that we could do with bleach, but they would be um, using different things than these. So today I wanted to try bleach on with all our color. And maybe another day we'll do bleach um, with some tools because there's some really cool effects that you can get. Um, using bleach with the tools. So 
Um, yeah. I'll show you a few of those one day. And but the stencil effect worked pretty well with the fairies. Yes, yes, the stencil did. Um, the key there, it seems, is having um, a stencil with large openings, mm -hmm. not lots of small uh, little teeny ones, because that yeah. it's going to bleed. Just know that the bleach is going to bleed. It's going to go underneath the stencil. You can't help that. You can't yeah. stop it. So, but it was a lot of fun. Anything that you guys try, please um, stick. Uh, put it in. I just saw Margie's stick trees. Please stick it in the group. <laughs> Margie, these are stick trees. You can do stick trees. <laughs> I can do stick trees. You can do stri strict trees. <laughs> Judy, we start at noon mountain time on Mondays. Yes, noon mountain time. So noon to two on Monday. Um, is Judy not on the, the message list? I'm pretty sure she is. Okay. Well, this week I will have the phone number up and you'll be able to go in and I'll give you the phone number. You text a message to it. And then okay. every time we go live, I'll be able to just shoot you a quick text. Um, and that for a lot of people is a lot easier because you can see it on your phone. Oh, going live in five minutes, you know, ready to go. So yes. yeah, we're at the tail end. But if you want to do this painting, um, you can just watch the last 20 minutes well, you might want to see before where I just put black down and then bleach across the center to bleach it out. And then I let it dry completely. That's the key. Let it dry completely. And then the last 20 minutes is exactly how you can make that um, make that painting. So, all right. Thank you. It's so much fun. We'll see you all on Thursday for Thursday Mass Make. Thank you, Gliss, for reading chat today. Really do appreciate it. <laughs>